Hey guys, what's up? John here from FlightMikeAlpha.com and today we are doing an oil change in three minutes. Let's get to it. So we're looking for that quick drain right there on our engine, connecting the little vinyl tube to it. Luckily we have a quick drain. Some engines, you may have to actually use a wrench to go ahead and take the drain plug out, much like your car. Push up, twist, and the oil is flowing right out into our little catch pail. Now luckily Steph took the airplane for a spin around beautiful Pahrump before trying to drain the oils to warm it up a little bit, but probably could have made that flight a little longer because the oil's, well, probably only about 120, 130 degrees, maybe. So it is flowing rather slowly. This part takes a while. Now, as we sit here with our oil draining, it should be important to note that obviously this is not a six quart or seven quart container. We have another container right there. When it comes time to swap out containers, you can simply just kink the hose or come back into here where we have our little hose connected up and turn off that quick drain. So you could just go ahead and snap that little quick drain back so that it'll stop the oil flow. Probably easiest just to go ahead and kink the hose. Now, because this oil's not so hot, it's taking a little bit of time to drain. This is the part where the mechanic makes all their money and the camera guy gets to crack a beer. So we know that mostly oil is out of the engine now so we can start to see a little bit of air appearing in the line here as we see that. We know we're getting down towards the end, but there's probably still another 10, 15 minutes of draining at least to go here. So we can go ahead and finish off that beer, or at least I can. Steph can continue working. And then we'll move on to step two, which is obviously close off where you're draining the oil from, close off that quick drain, and then go ahead and start removing your oil filter to replace it with a new one. Now, typically we go ahead and remove and replace the oil filter with the cowling on, but for demonstration purposes, it's best done with the cowling off. So step one, locate a big old wrench, about a one inch wrench that will fit on the back of the oil filter. Before you try to crank on it and break it free, you wanna go ahead and clip the safety wire that's holding it in place. Once you undo that safety wire, you'll typically wrap a big old plastic bag, works very well around the oil filter, right as you're loosening it. So you're gonna have to break it free with the wrench first. And then right as it gets loose where it's about to start dripping oil everywhere, slide your plastic bag around it so that'll catch all the oil as you remove the old oil filter, remove the old oil filter, and then you'll go ahead and write the tack time and the other information onto the brand new oil filter. Our engine center, <laughs> center engine. <laughs> it's for the center engine, not left or right. Did you pre-fill it? I want to put a little bit of oil in there first. Oh, like on the edge? On the edge and, and see if you can get some in the filter usually, itself. You just add an extra quart, no? Yeah, but then the engine's going to not be getting lots of oil when it, you first run it. So yeah, try, to, try to put some in there. I've never done that before. Yep. Yeah, best pre-fill the best you can without spilling too much okay. all over. Apply a thin little bit of oil, it could be new oil or used oil, around that O-ring on that new oil filter. Spin that on, follow the directions on the oil filter. Typically it's like make it hand tight and then go one turn past that or one and a half turns past it or three quarters of a turn or whatever it might be. And then you'll re-safety wire it in place. Now proper safety wire technique is a little bit beyond the scope of this video. It is a little bit of an art. So if you have any questions on that, go ahead and find a local A&P that can demonstrate and help you learn the proper technique to safety wire the oil filter on. The idea is obviously that wire is just gonna prevent it from coming loose. At this point, you should have the drain closed on the bottom of the engine or the drain plug replaced. If you had a drain plug, you'll wanna replace the washer, that crush washer that goes in between the plug and the oil pan as well. Your oil filter is tightened down to the proper spec. It's safety wired on there. You're gonna go ahead and refill your engine according to whatever the manufacturer maintenance manual says. So six quarts, seven, eight quarts, whatever it takes. Do a quick test run up, make sure you check for any leaks, make the appropriate notations in the maintenance logbook, and then save that old oil filter, track down an A&P, and really consider cutting open that old oil filter, pulling out the filter element and looking at it, seeing if there's any metal in that oil filter. Again, what you're looking for is a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but track down an A&P that's really familiar with piston engines and can give you a good read on what that oil filter is trying to tell you about the health of your engine. Now I know all that is pretty brief, but hopefully we hit all the high notes here for you. If you have any questions at all when it comes to doing an oil change on your airplane, whether it's a Cessna, Piper, home built, whatever it might be, go ahead and leave them in the comments right below on this video. And as always, guys, if you cannot fly every day, then fly 8 We will see y'all in the next video. Hey, are you going to share that? <laughs>
Can you put the tab down so I can actually drink? You can't drink <laughs> and work on the airplane at the same time, Steph. It's not safe. Only one of us can drink. You have to, somebody has to be responsible here and do good mechanic work. 